Ciao, friend. Ching, ching. This is Esther. Alfred is taking the night off, not feeling too good. So I'm here with you. Hope you're having a great day. And we're going to talk about some of the updates happening here in Sicily. But first, I have a story to tell you guys. I have a friend, Francesco. He has a shop down about two minute walk from us and he used to sell all types of junk. So anything that I needed for the house, let's say plastic bags or shampoo, or we ran out of something, he would have it. He would also have envelopes and things like that. And when I first came here, I used to go there to buy some stuff and I met his son who was at the time 13, Eduardo. And I have seen this boy, this Sicilian boy, single boy, single child, progress so much. It's so endearing. And today I found out that he will be knighted in downtown Catania. And at the age of 20, he will be the youngest Italian knight. So what an honor. Also, what's happening with Eduardo is that his father decided during COVID that he wanted to go back to his passion of baking and cooking. So now they have a little cafe where they have lunch stuff, they have cookies, cannolis, they make cakes, they have gelato, granita, and so forth. And Eduardo also works for his dad, as does the mother. During his free time, he also volunteers at the Civil Protection Agency. And he just announced that he is running, whoops, for counselor of Achicatena. There he is, 20 years old, the youngest knight in Italy, going to be running as counselor of Achicatena. What a great story. I just love the story of this Sicilian boy who really says, you know, his motto is, if you dream, you can make it happen. You can dream, you can make it happen. By the way, I don't know if you hear some fireworks, there must be some kind of a festival going on. It's spring and summer festivals all over Sicily. So it's a great time uh, to be here. But I wanted to share this uh, story of Eduardo because you know we talk so much about the mafia and that the young kids go to the mafia and, and you know the problems that they're having with unemployment and so forth. And Eduardo is such a beautiful story of a young boy who I met when he was 13, he's now 20, who's really striving, making a difference, volunteering at the Civil Protection Agency. He's going to be knighted, the youngest in all of Italy, and now he's running for counselor. So a ching ching to Eduardo. Great story, right, you guys? All right. So I'm going to be taking any of your questions in just a little bit. But first, I want to give you guys a little bit of an update. Huge news. June 1st, no more COVID restrictions. So for those of you coming to Italy after June 1st, you don't have to show a test anymore. You don't have to show vaccination anymore. You don't have to show proof of getting over COVID. You don't even have to take a blood test. You don't have to fill out the travel locator form. None of that. It's over. So that's good news. But until June 15th, you still have to wear a mask. So really great. And, you know, I talked to our vendors, our hotel and our bus drivers who also do cars, and they say that it is crazy, crazy busy period right now in Sicily. So we are really glad that Sicily is trying to get off its knees and running again with all these tourists. So we're waiting for you. I'm waiting for you to have a little glass of vino here with me uh, here in Sicily. The other thing um, happening is that tomorrow is Festa della Repubblica. June 2nd is Festa della Repubblica. In 1946, the people of Italy had a choice to go uh, to the ballots and vote to maintain the monarchy, uh, the Savoy monarchy, or to form a republic, and they voted uh, to form a republic. So that was a big thing. And Umberto of Savoy, who was the king of Sicily on June 12th, I believe, he thought it would be better to leave the country so there wouldn't be any conflict. And guess what? His descendants were not allowed to return 
to Italy until about 2000. So tomorrow is Festa della Repubblica, the tricolors, especially in Rome, uh, the tricolors will be flying, beautiful red, white, and green everywhere, flags, also marches, and a wreath will be laid in front of the tomb of the unknown in Rome. So it's a great thing. You know, you could, you could sort of say it's like the 4th of July, in the United States or something like that. So great little um, time here in Sicily. Uh, also, I want to just get some housekeeping things out of the way. Um, when Alfred goes home, I will have these beautiful Trinacrias, sterling silver ones available. They're very beautiful. Uh, Trinacria, of course, is the symbol of Sicily. And if you message me, uh, we have a few left, so message me and I'll make sure that I put you on the list. And finally, we still have some room available on our October tour, which is October 4 to 14. You depart your home country on the 4th, you arrive on the 5th, and from then we take care of everything. You don't even have to think. You just land, we pick you up at the airport, take you to the hotel, go out to dinner that night, then the next day we go to Catania, have a beautiful meal, uh, tour downtown Catania, then we the next day we do Giardini Naxos and also Tarmina, the next day Ortigia, and everything is pre-planned for you. So literally, you get on the plane, get off the plane, and you just come with us. You don't even have to think about what to eat. I tell you exactly what are the best foods in which restaurants, and then your last day, you're off. We take care of everything, Alfred and I. Of course, Alfred is security and logistics, as he likes to say, and uh, the brains, of course. Um, okay, so the other thing I wanted to tell you guys about is that next year, May of next year, we have our grand tour, which is going to be a few days on this side of the island, on the east side, and then we're going to do something completely different. We're going to go to the south and east of the island. So we're going to be in Avala. We're going to go to Mazamemi, the Noto Flower Festival. Um, also down there, Porto Palo, Pacino. What a beautiful area. Also Agrigento, the Valley of Temples. We are going to make a trip down there. So if you're interested, believe it or not, we already have seven people interested and we're capping it off at 14 or 16. So that's what I have to say. Those are the big messages of today. Um, I, I have to tell you, Edna, by the way, has been blowing like crazy. There's been uh, a lot of activity happening on Edna, lava flowing, a lot of smoke, um, but it is all fall, falling into the southeast crater. So no one around there, a lot of people ask me, well, do you feel danger around here? Um, we're aware of that now. She's always there. We can hear her. We can also certainly see the ashes many times because when she spews, especially in 2021, it was like, you know, snow falling, but it was like black ash. Um, but there are a number of organizations here in Sicily that are watching Aetna very closely, including Siganella, the the U.S. military base. So there are a lot of satellites. She's being watched from an entire area. So, you know, we're aware of her. Are we scared of her? Are we worried? No, you can't be scared of that Mama Edna. Of course, she is the mother of this land. All right. I want to say um, that I appreciate you guys for those joining us on Wednesdays. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming and saying hello to us. Of course, we also uh, go on Sundays at 4 p.m. Sicily time. Um, so it's a great time to connect with you guys. Yeah, right. What a beautiful story about Eduardo. Bravo. All right. If you guys have any questions from us, for us, uh, yeah, I hope Al is feeling better as well. Okay. Uh, thank you, Helen. Appreciate that. Hey, they realized they had to draw protocols for tourism this summer. Great news. Don't fear Mama Edna. Agree with you. Of course, she's a little bit, um, she can act up a little bit. And we've said this many times. Although Mount Edna explodes, she gets angry and she, you know, blows her stuff. She's also a great provider, especially for the people here in the Edna villages. They're so proud of her products, her produce, of course, her 
um, fruits and vegetables are very different than in other parts of the island. Her ashes act as a fertilizer. And so the foods, the, veg the fruits, the vegetables, the olives, the nuts, um, even when you go to markets, it'll say, you know, not cheat the Etna, not from Etna, or fungi, puccini uh, from Etna, the mushrooms from Etna. So she, people here are very proud of her products. And I don't know if you guys saw the video I just published about Etna wines, because Etna wines are up and coming, let me tell you. They're getting very popular. Our friend Daniel Ross was at Vin Italy. And he said, there's so much buzz going on, not only about Sicilian wines, which is great news, but also specifically about Etna wines. And I published a video uh, a few days ago featuring two Etna wines. And the interesting thing about those vineyards is that both of the owners spoke very specifically about how there's so many variables here that they have to contend with. And that Etna adds a different layer but she also accents and makes the wines better, different, different. And as, as Federico said in the uh, video, I said, well, you know, you have all these variables, including Etna. Well, that means your wines should be great. He said, well, we like to think they're unique. They are, they're very unique. So I encourage you guys to uh, watch that video. Hey, you guys have heard of Nero the Avila, right? I'm sure. Leave me a comment. You've heard of Nero de Avila. Have you guys tried the Etna Rosso or the Etna Bianco? Very curious to hear about that. Um, <clears throat> do you ever tour Palazzo Adrano in Trapani? Love Trapani. Love the province of Trapani. We have not um, toured Palazzo Adrano. But one of the things that we do, Deborah, is that when people come on our tours, a lot of times what they do is they extend their tours uh, either at the beginning or at the end and go to their ancestral home. And of course, that's something that we can, of course, arrange. So you get here, you do the tour with us, and then you go spend a day or something in your ancestral uh, hometown. Or we can do private customized tours for you. So it's all that, all um, in the sphere of things that we do. Can't wait to get my Trinakias. Cherries here are as much as $7.99. They're about, well, it depends what kind of cherries, about $3.99 or something like that. Uh, sometimes even more. Depends where you get them. Uh, minerals that must be in the soil around that's not good for all that ails you. That's right, Stephanie. Absolutely. Um, I had some in Tarmina. I'm curious what kind that you had. Uh, Peter, did you see Peter Scapoletti? First of all, I hope you're feeling great. I hope you're feeling better. Uh, I'm wondering if you saw that part about what the minerals effect is on the Etna wines. Uh, you say, I guess that means that I might be able to say tomatoes from Etna this year, perhaps a stretch, but trace ash elements for sure. Grazie. My pleasure, Peter. Absolutely. Okay. Have you seen the movie Cinema Paradiso? I love that movie. I love that movie based in Bagaria and also in Shafalu. What a classic, beautiful movie that is. Um, one of the best ones. And if you haven't seen it, I strongly suggest that you watch that one for sure. Uh, even before COVID, I had surgical mask on the plane because otherwise it was cold guaranteed. Yeah. I mean, those those types of risks are also going to be there. Um, Deborah, I want to tell you that the other day I also spoke about another movie that I really, really enjoyed. And that is The Mafia Never Kills in the Summer. And it is based in it's based about a boy and we see him growing up during the mafia era and the way he grows up and the circumstances that happen around him and how he sees what is happening with the mafia is just beautiful. And, you know, I don't usually watch these types of mafia movies, but it was about an hour and a half. It was on Netflix. And for me, that was definitely worth a watch. Yeah. Love that little Toto classical. Okay. Um, good. Yeah, definitely check that movie out. 
Uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you guys that uh, we just had our May tour finish up and I'm working on a video on the Noto Flower Festival, which was last month. I'm curious if you guys have been there, number one. Number two, would you like to see more videos on festivals? Very curious. The interesting thing is that festivals are starting again here in Sicily. The first one I went to was in May, uh, the Feast of San Alfio, Philadelphia in Chirino, which is Alfred's ancestral hometown in Trecastani. And I didn't go there for when the brothers came out on May 9th and 10th, or the actual festivals, May 10th, excuse me, or when the uh, brothers in Alfio, Philadelphia and Chirino actually come out of the church on the Vada. They're paraded up and down the streets to adoring crowds, of course. Uh, but I went a few days after when they were still having all these celebrations, uh, booths and crispelli and street foods and all these things. And it was just like it was two years ago. And I had a moment where I was like, oh, a blink of an eye. And here we are again. And very exciting down in Acitrezza is not far from here, I walk down there all the time, uh, is the Feast of San Giovanni Battista on June 24th. And what happens here in that little town, which is very unique than other towns, is that they have a Sagra de Pesce Spade, so a festival celebrating swordfish. And in the past, what happened was that, you know, there's music, of course, lights everywhere, all the streets are lit up. It's beautiful when they do that. And what happens is they have a grill and they take swordfish and grill it with a little bit of um, oregano, a brush of oregano, you know, the old dried oregano. They uh, dip it in a little bit of olive oil, lightly brush it, grill it. And they have a little bit of a salad and a glass of vino. And in the past, it was like 10 euro. And you gather there and eight, and it was a way to fund the festival of San Giovanni Battista. So that's a great, great way to enjoy some of the local foods, some of the local colors, some of the local sounds and support the uh, Festa of San Giovanni Battista. So, you know, starting now, I suggest if you're coming here or if you're planning here, really look at a calendar and see if you can fit in a festival because having the festival experience here in Sicily is not like any festival that you have seen. I remember uh, first time I went to the festival of, Sun, of uh, Philadelphia, Chile, Alfio Philadelphia and Chirino in Lawrence, Massachusetts, which is Alfred's uh, hometown, uh, to interview his brother and some of the other experts. And I saw what a feast was like in the United States. And I clearly remember maybe two years later, one or two years later, going to the actual feast here. And it was a far different experience. Of course, there is a level of religious fervor that you don't see maybe in the United States or other places, um, but it, a beautiful, beautiful nonetheless. Very emotional, very spiritual experience. And, you know, a great thing to go to for any age because there's that part where you can witness the saints coming out and how people, you know, take their babies, give one euro so they can touch or kiss the uh, saints. Then there's the musical aspect. There's the street food aspect, which is so important in these festivals. And then you can see the community because people do make this a family event. It's a beautiful family event. You know, a lot of my friends, um, are very, very adamant about keeping traditions alive. And these are small Sicilian traditions that have been here for centuries, passed down from generation to generation. And keeping that alive is very important. So ching ching to festivals and traditions, right? All right. Ching ching to you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, life is beautiful. Uh, is a must-seen Italian film, and Viva Fellini. I did see Life is Beautiful. That is a beautiful. Uh, is Etna Land still operational? You know what, Deborah? I can check for that. You know, there's been a lot of changes that have happened um, during COVID. Some 
uh, places have closed, some have changed uh, some of their hours or operations or changed names or so forth. But if you send me a message, I will certainly check that because that is a great place to take uh, children. A lot of fun stuff happening on Etna land. So that's a good question. Thank you. I buy my Gambino Tifeo Blanca here locally in San Francisco Bay Area, readily available. So Nancy, that's so interesting. The Gambino brothers, uh, that was one of the first episodes that we did in 2014. We went up to Lingua Glossa is where their vineyards are. And the interesting thing, let me just tell you guys this story. It's in our playlist called uh, Food, Wines, and Culture in Sicily. And the interesting thing, obviously, the name Gambino, right? The Mafia. And uh, we talked about the wines. I got a uh, you know, a little bit of a tour of the vineyard, how they make it and so forth. They also talked about the Etna effect. You know, I said, well, you know, the name Gambino. And he said, well, you know, when this is the name, by the way, the last name of their mother, not their father. And they said, you know, we were so proud of my mother uh, because it was her idea to start a vineyard. It was in her family before, and then she passed it down. We thought, we're going to keep the name Gambino. Why not? And he said, we went to some distributors in New York, New Jersey, and some of those other areas, and they said, we can't sell a wine with the label Gambino. Why don't you change the name? You know what the brother said? No way. They turned around walked out and said, no, we're keeping my mother's name on these labels. So another ching ching to those brothers, the Gambino brothers, certainly a great wine. And if you come here, Lingo Glossa is located, uh, that vineyard is at the highest location of Mount Etna. So it's at, I can't remember how many meters, but it's at the highest location. The other two vineyards that I featured, Firiato and Alcantara, are in uh, Castagnoli di Sicilia, which is a little bit lower down, but just as good. So an interesting story about the Gambinos, for sure. Uh, yeah, right, here's to preserving culture, so important. Um, Lisa, they have Dona Fogada, uh, Cusumano, uh, Cusumano tanuti, Tenuta, Regalare, that's a really good one. We need to promote Sicilian products wherever we can. And listen, Lisa, when you are done, please check out that video on Sicilian wines, because I agree, very important. And, um, you know, the wines from Sicily, the ones uh, that Lisa mentioned, certainly very, very good. But boy, Dona Fogata is one of the top rated. Love Dona Fogata. Um, but really also all products, all Sicilian products. We often talk about olive oil, which are readily available in many stores. Uh, we often talk about the Asado products because they make products using only, only uh, Sicilian olives. A lot of the other companies, they mix. Um, so we certainly uh, endorse and push Sicilian products. Also things like um, pistachio cream or pistachio uh, pesto from Bronte uh, on the Mount Etna side and anything that you can find, um, I strongly encourage because you know what, at the end of the day, that helps the economy here, certainly helps the economy here. Um, I suggest asking your local wine store, oh, you hear that dog? <laughs> Always something fun when we're live. I suggest asking your local wine store for Sicilian wines. We did this and now have several options, including white rosé uh, and more. That's a great idea. And also, uh, there's a website called www.winesfromitaly.com. Daniel Ross, he has a whole section of wines only from Sicily. Of course, he has it from uh, several other areas, but also um, from um uh, from Sicily specifically, and he, he also has the Firiato and also the Alcantara, which is very, very good. Uh, if you're joining us now, thank you for watching, and uh, Alfred is taking a little bit of a snooze. He's not uh, feeling too good. Uh, we spoke earlier about my friend Eduardo, 
and how good he's doing. Uh, he's running for counselor in Nachicatena, and also he's going to be knighted. Imagine that, the youngest knight in Italy. Always something good. All right, before we go on, I want to make sure that you guys ask questions. Uh, drop them in the comment. But I haven't shown you guys our view in quite a while. So I would just want to show you guys. This is our view. Straight ahead over there is Campo Molino, right there. You can see. And then down there is Achitrezza which are the Cyclops rocks. All right, so let me tell you guys what's coming up. Uh, well, next week we are going to the province of Trapani for our June tour. We're going to be touring Palermo, Montreal, Shaka, uh, also San Vitolo Capo, beautiful place down there. Um, we're going to have a vineyard visit. A, we're going to go to Suggesta, which is a great, great um, Greek ruin not just the Valley of Temples, people, not just the Valley of Temples, strongly uh, recommend that you go to places like Selyuninti and Suggesta, which have very unique correction of um, Greek ruins. Um, and we're going to be based out of Alcumo Marina in Castellamare del Golfo. So we're going to be broadcasting from there, God willing, if the internet works, hopefully. And I'm thinking, what do you guys think? One of the days I'm going to be in downtown Palermo, and if the internet allows, I'm going to try and go uh, live from Palermo. We haven't done that in a long time. And you guys know, as with everything here in Sicily, it's all dependent on the internet because the bandwidth is not that great. But they keep promising to have faster internet. So who knows if that will happen? Um I've been to the beautiful site as well. Um, so where can we find the festival calendar? So one of the things depends where you are. There are some websites. So for example, visit Sicily.it. The region of Sicily has their own website that is geared towards tourism. So there are some events there. The other thing that you can do is perhaps you're going to some town uh, let's say Palermo, then you can Google Palermo festivals or go to their actual website. The community or the town or the city has an actual website and very often they list uh, the events over there. The other big thing to do also is, you know, the churches. Um, so let's say you're going to Melilli, for instance, in the province of Syracuse, where they have the festival of San Sebastiano, and I don't, I can't remember where, but if you go to the Cathedral of San Sebastiano's website, I know for a fact, it lists there the dates of the festival and also any related events that will be leading up to it, because a lot of times they'll have things leading up to the festival, like here in Achitrezza, they have the Sagra of the Pesci Spada, San Sebastiano, they must have something. So I suggest, you know, take a look at where you're going, number one. Um, perhaps pick a, a city and see when their festivals are. Now, there's also things called sagras. So you have the festa, and then you have the sagra. Sagra are celebrations of foods or products. So um, the sagra de mandorla, the almond festival, sagra de pistacchio, uh, which will happen in September of this year for the first time in two years up in Bronte. I can't remember which weekend, but they're ha definitely having the pistachio uh, festival again. And then they have the fragola, uh, Sagra de Cacciofi, all over the place. There are websites that are dedicated to that. But if you have a specific um, question, Gianna, why don't you uh, send me a note? That would be great. Uh, in the spring with, oh, they're so beautiful and so colorful. The flowers right now are booming everywhere. There's pinks, there's oranges, excuse me, there's purple. Definitely, uh, if you have a little bit of allergies, definitely allergy season for sure. Uh, the other thing, you know, it's getting a little bit hot. We have some kind of a sub-Saharan heat that's coming this way starting today it was about 80 degrees it's, that's pretty unusual here uh, for sicily to have that 
much heat. Uh, also up in northern Italy, they're expecting temperatures in the hundreds. I know, I can't believe it. Uh, but it's a sub-Saharan heat that's going to last for, uh, they say, less than a week. So if you're coming here, make sure you stay uh, prepared. But usually... Um, it's about 70s here, and in the evening it gets a little bit cooler. You know, I'm, I'm wearing something light, and it's 6.30 right now. So um, this is a little bit warmer than we're used to during this time of the year. All right, I'm going to wait for a few more minutes if you guys have any questions or comments. And uh, I will be working on the Noto Flower Festival that will be published in the coming days. And... I'm looking forward to going to Palermo and celebrating my birthday there because Monday is going to be my birthday, June 6th, D-Day. Whoops, someone's calling. Whoops. They can wait. <laughs> All right. So, um, yep, we're going to go on Monday to Castellamare del Golfo and Alcamo Marina and stay there for 10 days. Then we're coming back and we're going to go to Avila to scope out the hotel for our May 2023 tour, which is going to be our grand tour. Um, so busy time here. And then Alfred's birthday is coming up on June 26th. June's a great month. Don't you agree? June. Here's to June. <laughs> June's a great month, not only um, to be here in Sicily, but also uh, it's just a great month. Anyway, on that note, unless you guys have any more questions, Hopefully, Alfred will be back. Who knows? Hopefully, he'll be back. We'll send along well wishes to him. And uh, hope to see you guys Sunday. And thank you. Thank you so much for spending this time here with me, keeping me company, and sharing your love for Sicily. Alfred would say it, San Benedicta. And I say, chin chin, arrivederci, and thank you. Ciao.